الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله continue on in our study of some of the fiqh and benefits of Ramadan and we were talking about in general some of the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about fasting uh, it, was, it was reported on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'anhu that he said I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying whoever fasted for a day in Allah's cause Allah will remove his face a distance of 70 uh, years from the hellfire it's, the meaning is uh, in the hadith Sabi'in Kharifa and the scholars differed over the meaning some they say that it refers to 70 years and the point of the hadith or the shahid of the hadith and the benefit that we can gain is that fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove a person from uh, fasting is a protection from the hellfire as we mentioned in another hadith Asun Junna Minanar Kajunnati Ahadikum Min Al Kitab. That fasting is a shield like the fasting of any of you in battle. So fasting it protects you from the hellfire. And in this hadith we just mentioned Mansama Yoman Fisabilila that whoever fasts in the sake of Allah, uh, the scholars also mention, some of them mention that this is uh Fisabilila, not just fasting, but fasting during jihad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and is reported in the authority of Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'anu that he said I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying asum junna malam yakhrikuka fasting is a shield as long as the slave does not pierce it meaning break their fast uh, and this is a Hassan uh, hadith and in another hadith, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fasting is a shield from the fire. So anyone wake, who wakes up in the morning and he is fasting, he should not behave ignorantly. And if anyone behaves ignorantly towards him, he should not malign him or slander him. Instead, he should say, I am fasting. By him in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, the fragrance from the mouth of the fasting person is sweeter to Allah than the scent of of miss because in the dunya a, a lot of times we feel that that's of course if someone has what's called cotton mouth they have very dry mouth from not drinking enough water or there's no food in their stomach or whatever the various causes for having uh, a, a smell from one's mouth we think that is a we find that is a repulsive smell we don't find that as something nice you don't like oh so and so his breath is very dry or there's so you know that smells nice no but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves that and it's like the smell of mist. So that means the reward is immense for that patience of being with that discomfort of having a dry mouth and an empty stomach. It's reported of the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Whoever fasted a day in Allah's cause, Allah will move him a distance of 70 autumns from the fire. So that's another narration of the same hadith we mentioned. We also mentioned that fasting, it causes a slave to be admitted to paradise. And we mentioned some of the ahadith and the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that talk about al-bab al al-rayyan. Uh, it was reported in the authority of Abu Umama radiallahu ta'anu that he said, I went to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Command me to do something which I may take from you. He said, Alayka bi som fa innuhu la mithla lahu. The Prophet wasallam said, You should fast, for there is nothing like it. So it lets us know the uniqueness of that act of ibadah, because fasting is a ibadah uh, amaliyah. You know, it's, a, it's a, a, an act of worship you do with your body. You fast. You know, you sacrifice. And likewise, uh, the other components, of course, your heart is involved in fasting. Of course, your niya and, and so forth. But the asl is that it is a fast. Fasting is one of the physical acts of ibadah, showing it's a part of iman. Uh, in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, You should fast, for there is nothing equal to it. Uh, so those ahadith show us that the reward of fasting is immense. And in another uh, 
hadith reported on the authority of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala that he said, I placed the head of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to rest on my chest. And he said, whoever said that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, seeking by this means Allah's face, it will be ordained for him thereby that he will enter paradise. And whoever fasted for a day seeking by this means means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face, it will be ordained for him thereby that he will enter paradise. And whoever gives something in charity, seeking by this Allah's face, it will be ordained for him thereby that he will enter paradise. And this is an authentic hadith showing us that the intention is very important in your fasting and all of your acts of ibadah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <laughs> uh, in the hadith uh, of Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala'in, who said, I heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, uh, actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone shall get that which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and His Messenger, then he is migrated for Allah and His Messenger. And he who migrates to take some woman in marriage or to gain some worldly matter will get that which he intended. Letting us know that your intention uh, is must be attached to any act of worship that you do. And that intention is to please who? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the intention is to worship who? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And notice in this hadith, it said, whoever said that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, seeking by this means Allah's face. Allah's face, this is in reference to seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith. In this hadith, the meaning is that seeking to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his, his pleasure, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people of fasting, they will be rewarded with immense immense benefit in this life as well as the hereafter. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all the good deeds of the son of Adam multiply his reward from 10 to 700 times. Allah the Almighty, the All-Powerful said, except for fasting, for it is for me, and I will reward him for it, since he abandons his passion and food for my sake. There are two occasions of joy for the one who fasts. Joy when he breaks it, and joy when he meets his Lord. And the breath of a fasting person is sweeter to Allah than the fragrance of musk. This is a hadith uh, Qudsi. So in this hadith, that means the Prophet Sallallahu narrated this on Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. It's not considered part of the Qur'an. We don't make ta'abud with this uh, as we do with the Qur'an, with reciting the Qur'an. But this is an authentic hadith Qudsi, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu narrated this on Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and it's considered a, a sacred hadith. So here the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that fasting is for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a reward is immense, and whoever does it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, will be re immensely rewarded. And he mentioned that there are two occasions of joy for the one who fasts. One is in the dunya, when you break your fast. You know, you're ready. You're ready to eat those sambusa. You're ready to eat those dates. You're ready to drink that water. You're so ready, especially in this hot desert. That's one of the pleasures. And the other pleasure is in the hereafter. That is in the hereafter that you'll be rewarded for that fasting that you sacrificed for. And in another, uh, uh, this is also the uh, mentioning of the same hadith. Uh, in another Hadith also, which is Hadith of Qudsi, the Prophet Sallallahu he related from his Lord that he said, meaning Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, for every sinful deed there is an expiation, and the fast is for me, so I will give the reward for it, and the smell which comes out of the mouth of a fasting person is sweeter to Allah than the smell of musk or mist. This is an authentic Hadith. Fasting helps to weaken the desires, as we mentioned. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya ma'ashir al-shabab, alaykum bil ba'ati, fa innuhu avdhu lil basr, wa ahsinu lil faraj, wa man lam yastati' fa alayhi bisoom, fa innuhu lahu wijah. The Prophet ﷺ said, O young men, 
there uh, those amongst you who can support a wife you know who's able to marry should marry for it restrains the eyes from casting evil glances and preserves one from immorality but he who cannot afford it should observe fasting for it is a means of controlling sexual desire so the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that fasting is a way to control one's nafs control their their sexual desires control their uh you know their general desires that the fasting is a means for that that is a means especially if you're fasting for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's you know, those effects upon your body the physical uh, effects upon your body as well as and, and and in addition to the spiritual uh, in also fasting the virtue of Ramadan and the virtue of acting upon it uh, firstly Ramadan is the month of the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hunan lil-nas wa bayyanati min al-huda wa al-furqan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and a criteria. So what? The month of Ramadan in which re was revealed the Quran. The Quran was revealed in Ramadan. Allah the Almighty, the All-Powerful, revealed His glorious book to His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the night of Laylatul Qadr in the blessed month of Ramadan as a guidance for the hearts of His slaves and as a criterion by which to judge between truth and falsehood and illumination of the path of goodness and as a means of pointing out the paths of misguidance and evil. So the Quran is a Furqan, it, it, it's, a, it's a criterion for distinguishing the truth from falsehood. And it's drinking haq from battle and it's drinking uh, uh, tawheed from, uh, from kufr and iman from disbelief and shirk from tawheed. All of those things the Quran is it distinguishes those things because uh, we have from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the Quran we know and understand the meanings of those things and the differences between Tawheed and Shirk and, and Ibadah and or, or, or Iman and Kufr and all of those other things the Quran is the criterion for the truth also in Ramadan the gates of the gardens of paradise are open the gardens of hell are closed and the rebellious jinn are fettered in chains and shackles. So this is very important. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids us and makes our worship easier by this great ni'mah and the reward is immense from that. Uh, it was reported in the authority of Abu Huraira that he said the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Atakum Ramadan Shahr Mubarak. Faradullahu Azza wa Jal Alaikum Siyamu. Tuftahu Fihi Abwaba Sama. Wutuglaku Fihi Abwaba Jahid. Wutugalu Fihi Marda Tul Shayati. Lillahi Fihi Layla Tul Khairum Min Alf Shahr. Men Hurima Khairaha. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said The month of Ramadan has come to you It is a blessed month which Allah the Almighty, the All-Powerful Has ordained that you must fast In it the gates of heaven are open And the gates of the hellfire are closed And in it the rebellious devils are shackled To Allah belongs a night in that there is better than a thousand months whoever is deprived of goodness is truly deprived meaning whoever doesn't benefit from Ramadan benefit from Qiyam al benefit from their fasting by being a better Muslim a better believer coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they will they, they prohibited themselves from the good and this hadith is Hassan so this is a very important hadith and it shows us that at least the major shayateen are shackled because the scholars they also mention uh, uh, in regards to this hadith when they explain that uh, you know that the major shayateen are shackled and perhaps you'll find shayateen from amongst the jinn and the mankind the minor shayateen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best 
In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The dakhla Ramadan, futihat abwabu jannah, wa wa ghulqat abwab a jahannam, wa sulsila wa sulsila tishayatin." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "When the month of Ramadan starts, the gates of heaven are open, the gates of hell are closed, and the devils are chained up." Uh, and there are many ahadith which uh, refer to this the same meaning. Another uh, important thing with regards to the holy month of Ramadan is that it's a month of forgiveness of our sins. Uh, the Prophet wasallam said, as related by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, who said, Man sama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhibbihi. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever observes fast, during the month of Ramadan, out of sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's reward, then all his past sins will be forgiven. And this is a hadith, this is an authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim in Abu Dawood, with Nisa'i, Bukhair. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who fast the holy month of Ramadan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.